Hello again, this is Russ. And in this video, my goal is to provide you some help for your peer-reviewed article assignment. I hope to give you a clear idea of what we mean by literature review meta-analysis and a step-to-step -step guide for completing it. A reminder about the flow of the class. These are the different assignments and each assignment is meant to build on the last one. So we've completed the book review and many of you are working on the annotated bibliography. These assignments should inform your peer-reviewed article. The sources that, that you find in your annotated bibliography, those are the foundation of your, your peer-reviewed article. Uh, and then once you have this article in place, the final three assignments for the class will flow from that, will be uh, more condensed versions of this. Okay, what is a literature review meta-analysis? You may know this by different names. Sometimes it's called a meta-synthesis or an integrative literature review or evaluative review or a synthesis review article. These are all similar ideas around this concept of systematically reviewing the literature on your topic to uh, produce new knowledge. So basically, this is a, a standalone publication. You are not collecting new data or conducting your own research. You are doing secondary research on other researchers' primary sources. So because of that, there's really an emphasis on rigor, on understanding the process that you went through to find these sources and how you're analyzing them. So yes, it is a, a literature review like you may be used to for your other papers, but it, it's more of a systematic literature review uh, that's more rigorous in nature. Um, ultimately, you are going to make a contribution to knowledge um, using this meta-synthesis that will um, move the conversation forward on your topic, uh, much like you did for your book review. So let me give you, let me walk you step through, step by step through this assignment, and then I'll give you some examples for what we mean. Um, and as I do this, please know this is not meant to be overly prescriptive. So if, if you have a a different um, method or format that follows these same principles, uh, you're welcome to use that. These are the sections that are uh, key to a, a literature review article. In the first section, the introduction, these are the key elements that um, Dr. Freeman is looking to see. So note that you will not necessarily need a formal literature review section in this article, but if you feel that it's important for the reader to have some background on your topic, you may want to provide a brief literature review to bring the reader up to speed on, on what you're uh, suggesting in your article. Uh, you're also going to want to talk about who your target audience is and what's your motivation for addressing this topic is. Okay, methods. This is the most essential step of the process, so I want to take a few minutes to make sure it's clear. I would recommend working on this at the beginning because it forms the basis of the rest of your study. You're showing your researchers uh, or other researchers how to repeat your study if necessary. Now, in a meta-analysis methodology, your method will most likely be a systematic search of your library's online database. And it's important to really be explicit about how you carried out that search. For example, what your data sources were, the, the search terms and strategies that you used, and what criteria you used for including certain studies and excluding others. You also want to say if this is an exhaustive search or just a representative search based on the uh, available information that you had. So you're going to get quite familiar with the UI search database. This will become your best friend. You may also want to use uh, Google Scholar or another search database if that's better for your field. 
Now let me give you an example, but I think this will help crystallize what we mean by a, a meta-analysis. For my paper, I did a review of leadership development programs for mid-level leaders in higher education. And in my, my methods section, I talk specifically about how I conducted the data analysis and I created this flow chart to illustrate. So at the top, I list the data source that I'm drawing from, the search terms and strategies that I'm using, and then the type of material I'm looking for and the date range. Now this produced a, an initial set of results, um, 736 sources, which I then filtered out based on uh, categories that uh, weren't applicable to my study. You'll see in the UI database, if you use that, on the left-hand side, there are filter categories that you can use to pare down your study. So that gave me an initial set of results, and I still had to pare these down um, to get to a core set of studies. And so I created some criteria for evaluating my results based on my research topic. For example, I was looking for literature on mid-level academic leaders, not senior level leaders like deans or university presidents or provosts. And I wanted the, the research to take place in a US context or an English speaking uh, academic context. So the, these criteria helped me get down to a more core set, um, but then there were still certain studies that I felt needed to be rejected for various reasons. For example, I wasn't interested in looking at students in higher education, I was interested in the faculty and staff. So um, that was one of my reasons for rejection. As a result, I was I ended up with these uh, 15 to 20 different sources that formed the basis of my analysis. Now, was the process this clean the first time around? No, it certainly wasn't. There was a lot of trial and error uh, using different search terms and strategies to come up with my list. Uh, if you have a very narrow topic, I would recommend starting a little more broad and then narrowing down as opposed to starting too specific because you may miss certain studies um, that you, you can't uh, incorporate into your research. Next is your findings section where you report and organize your findings. Now you choose the best method for organization. Is it by methodology, by chronology, by model or theory? or just by theme that you've observed in your, your studies. It's important to link the studies to each other and compare and contrast the, the relationships. And here again, a table or a graphical representation may help the reader. And I'll use mine as an example. So here's an example from my paper. I did a thematic analysis and came up with six themes of an effective leadership development program, uh, the delivery characteristic of those programs. So I reported the themes and then I had um, author references that supported each of those themes here. So I, this was used to uh, supplement what I wrote about in my findings. Uh, next, your discussion section. This is where your purpose is to uh, answer your original research question um, and to create an original point about the, um, the findings that you've, that you've seen. Um, so is it a, a new perspective or a, a new um, way of thinking about your question that you wanna put forward to the readers? And here again, it's important to link back to your research findings and provide that thread of, of coherence through your paper. Now I should say some authors combine the findings and the discussion section together, and that's okay, as long as you address all of these points in the process. Now this is a key section that is sometimes overlooked in the process. 
Now, what are the real world implications of your research and who can benefit? Basically, who cares and why should they care about your findings? And here's where you can make some specific recommendations for putting into practice your findings. Um, and, uh, and also talk about future research opportunities as a result. Now, one suggestion, if you find that two of your studies are conflicting and you don't know why, here's where you can suggest a resolution to that and um, encourage future research to address that question. Okay, um, finally, I would just remind you that like any form of writing, outlining will be your best friend in this project. So uh, begin with a strong outline and that will help you throughout the paper. Also begin with the end in mind. Think about your audience and think about a potential destination for this research. Lastly, there are a couple resources on BB Learn that will help you. I recommend this presentation by Caroline Turner. You can see how she conducted a meta-analysis. And then uh, Philip Mayer's guide uh, talks about different forms of literature review analyses. Um, and, and that's where I took uh, some content from this presentation. So I hope this was helpful. I am available if you have questions or want to talk about your process or your topic. Feel free to reach out to me. We can set up a Zoom time or correspond over email. And good luck with your paper.